thanks again for being here with us. Um, I thought I would start by picking up on what you were saying in the introduction, Bianca, about your book, since that was in many ways the starting point. If you could say a little bit about the impetus behind it. I'm also curious what form the book took. I think the book exists only in Dutch, right? Yes, it exists only in Dutch and very unlike the film, which is more like a wandering through the city. This is more like a like, like a guidebook. So it right, gives the book is called Atlas of an Occupied yes, City. So. and it has a lot of uh, uh, pictures from the wartime and maps and so on. And it gives you really street by street and neighborhood by neighborhood um, what happened. Yeah, in that sense also kind of time machine on paper. Could you say a bit about what prompted the book? And also I'm curious about the process of researching it. Um, what prompted it was a question from my from my dad when I just started to study history, so a long time ago. Um, so we should say you're a historian. I'm a historian, well. yes. yeah. Um, he wanted to know when the Germans came to Amsterdam, where did they go? Was that all premeditated or how did that go? And I so that's an interesting question. And then I started to broaden that question because of a lot of things in the city um, of that kind, especially where the perpetrators were, no one knows that anymore because obviously there are not going to be monuments erased for the, for the perpetrators. So I thought, you know, before all this kind of knowledge gets, um, gets lost in, uh, in the history books, let's try to make a book that maps it all out. So that was the starting point. And when did you finish the book? Um, in 2019. Okay. Yeah. Right. But you obviously had been working for it for many on for it for many it, years. It, it was quite a job to do all yeah. the research. Yes. <laughs> um, and Steve, I've heard you say that this was a project you'd considered in some form uh, many years ago. Yeah. Um, sort of moving to Amsterdam and. Um, just feeling that, you know, it's a 17th century city, so you often feel that you're living at, with, with ghosts, in a way. You're, there's two, if not three, parallel lives going on other than your own. Um, the city was, wasn't, was, wasn't bombed during the war. Um, uh, basically, Rotterdam was bombed, and they threatened to bomb Amsterdam, so they, that's how part of the surrender came about. Um, and I remember walking along the street with Bianca when I first met her, um, and asking, well, what's this monument for? And um, this was a, 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 a monument for, um, where basically a monument where the, a Nazi soldier had been e executed uh, by the resistance and where um, I think it was a number of people, I think 17, I can't remember what the number of people were gathered together and executed. So that sort of shocked, shocked me, just you know, coming from London, a, a non-occupied city, coming to an occupied city with this recent history kind of really kind of... Uh, gave me a bit of a shudder. Um, and then to discover that my daughter's um, school and where she, her lockers were, and where you know, kids were jostling and you know, putting in their rucksacks in the, in, into their lockers, parking their bikes, this actual space was a space where the SS um, had their sort of interrogation center. So that, 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 that image of children and innocence and you know, this brutal violence, the, the two together was in my mind. And I thought, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? And then I had this idea of an artwork where I thought, oh, I'll find some footage from that time and then parallel that footage, because of course it's 17th century city. So you can have the living and the dead in the same frame. So you could put, project one image onto another image, meaning that you could map the image perfectly. And then in that frame had the living and the dead, because they, they all be to scale. And the, and the houses and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the buildings would, would just be re-emphasized. So I thought that could be amazing as an image. And I thought, no, the past is text, Banker's book, and the present is now. So that was it. That was the sort of, um, how the film came about in a way. I mean, it's interesting that the idea of superimposition was there from the start, but you know, you, to, instead of doing two images, you, you, you work with text yeah, and was, image. But it was still physical. It was yeah. still sort of sculptural in a way, yeah. Um, I'm just curious about, <laughs> I guess one big question that this film, poses, I think, anytime you're dealing with the past or with history, certainly with the Holocaust, you, you, you grapple with this question of what, what is and what isn't showable. 
for practical and, and ethical reasons. So, you know, I'm just, if you could say a little bit more about why you thought the images, why you want, why this film is anchored in, in images of the present, of today. Well, I think, you know, absence is present in this film. You know, the absence is definitely, it's kind of deafening in, in, its, in, in, its, uh, in its absence and its presence. Um, and I feel that even in this city, in New York, it, there is that feeling as well. I, may, I remember, for example, you talk about things that can be shown, things that can't be shown. I'm not too sure. You know, again, it's about the filmmaker. It's about their responsibility uh, as a filmmaker, as an artist. I remember, actually, funny enough, we were in Washington, myself and Bianca, uh, going to the White House, as you do. And we walked, we were walking around Washington, and then we found the 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 slave pen, the location of the actual slave pen where Solomon Northup was, and actually now it's a sort of U.S. Uh, it's, a, it's a naval, it's, it's actually a, it's an aircraft, isn't it? Isn't it? The, the U.S. Air Force Base, and there it was. It's, this, this building has been plonked on top of where this slave pen was in Washington, and we found the hotel that that, that Solomon was. Uh, was, was, was kidnapped. So this, again, it's, it's, it's the past and the present, and, it, and, it, and it's, it's so deafening. Um, but all you've got to do is sprinkle some flour over it, and it's, it's, it's illuminated, and that's film. That was good, wasn't it? That was good. Go down tape. <laughs> yeah, hell. Bang. Um. I'm curious because this is also an interesting companion piece to the film you made, Bianca, three, three minutes, a lengthening, which uses, um, does use archival footage unlike this film, but uses it in a very particular way. In fact, that film is entirely focused on this three minutes of footage. If you can, you know, since if you can talk about just the process of, 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 of working on these two films back to back, which takes such different, different approaches. Yeah, they're, they're, they're almost the complete uh, opposites of each other because here there's no archival footage at all. And in that three minutes of length thing, it's, I used a, a piece of uh, color film of a Jewish community in a small uh, town in Poland, Nashelsk, and made that into a, a film of, I think, 70 minutes. So that is, you know... Of course, all these kind of ways of doing it are grappling with that um, absence and um, um, presence. And, and here, of course, in this film, you get that the sound also, sometimes you can um, find a connection between what happened there uh, so many years ago and now, and very often you can't, or you have to try to, to grapple to make that connection yourself. So there's a very active part for the for the viewer to negotiate that space between the past and the present anew in every um, scene. Um, I'm curious just about the the shooting. Um, you shot over several years. Uh, we shot about two and a half, three years. Um, Thirty six hours of footage. Um, <laughs> and you shot on film, right? Sorry? You shot on film. We shot on, oh, absolutely. What was so beautiful about shooting on film was the process, because it was, you know, shooting on 35 millimeter actual film, it's, 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 it's so precious, this footage. So it actually adds to the tension of being careful of how you, how you actually, how you approach um, the moment. And sometimes you have to preempt the moment before it actually happens. That's, and that's just through sort of instinctiveness, but also through failure. <laughs> but often it was a case of, no, put it here. Um, yeah, no, down there, okay. And you just kind of had an, a, a taste. Uh, you know, the senses were working. It's like music after a while, in a way, of where you put, where you compose, and, and where you wait. Um, and then, of course, when you press, you know, that, when you rattle that, that film, you're like, yikes. But then again, you, we were in a moment. It's very beautiful to have that process of, of danger, but also that process of, it's, it's uh, what is it? it? There's a bit of uh, waiting. Um, 
I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to figure out what it was because it's 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 so dangerous because it's so damn expensive. But there was a wonder. There was a wonder about it. What could happen, and what did happen. So it was it was it was great. It was um, it was odd. It was uh, it was beautiful. And it's, the, the crew was so beautiful. Because again, when you get on with people for two and a half, three years, it's it's, it's you, you it becomes sort of uh, it becomes so wonderfully um, uh, like a dance. We we knew we knew and and and, and instinctively so. It's wonderful. Yeah, the crew was amazing, absolutely incredible. Hope we do something with them again. In terms of you know what you shot and where you shot, were you using the book as 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 a guide, and and how how did that work? Well, the addresses, the addresses and Bianca's text, and then from there we sort of you know you negotiate what to shoot and how to shoot it. Um, and sometimes I had no idea. I just turn up. Okay, what where we where are we going now? I read the text see the location, and therefore you just sort of have an idea of how you're going to shoot it. You know, if I wanted to go inside, which was wonderful, because what was great about it, people would open their doors to us, and once they heard about what it was about, subject matter, 95% of the people opened their doors to us. And that, was, that, that interior was so important to get that whole, whole idea of, 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 of the actual locations that people were in, but also to, to look outside the window in some ways. And uh, so that was interesting. Just the whole idea of what I wanted, in reality, was to sort of make a picture almost like an English garden, because English garden is about um, the, this, to Miranda, to, to roam, to get lost and to be found. And Amsterdam is one of those beautiful cities that you can get lost in one way or the other, but also be found. It really is this sort of uh, uh, to, to find it through the film and itself. I mean, working with it, again, I don't know if it's documentary. I don't know if it's feature film. I don't know if it's. Uh, I don't know what the hell. I, what the hell I was doing. I was. I'm not interested. I was not interested in the whole idea of framing the film as any kind of genre. All I wanted to do was to allow Bangus Tech to bring us to some place to us discover what we could discover in the moment of now, but reflecting on the past, and that was exciting. And it was kind of. It was kind of dangerous in a way because at the end of the day, I, we didn't know what we were going to get, and um, we, we, it, was, it was just a lot of faith, a lot of faith, in the process and in film. And can we say, talk a bit about the text? Um, the text is from the book. Um, not one on not, one, not, but, okay. but mostly yes. Is yes. this the tone of the book? Yeah, I, I wanted it's to write. The book is also so written as as uh, factual and and f a little bit um, uh, distant. So all the emotion comes from from the facts and not from you know. Uh, rub it in. That's not necessary. It can speak for everything. Can speak for itself as much as possible. And what you think about it is for the viewer to decide. So in that sense, I wanted to write it as open as possible. I think there had to be a, a detachment and 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 a wonder, and uh, 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 the whole idea of you know again allowing the viewer to sort of respond to what is being said. I think that's the most important thing, allowing the viewer to respond to what's being said rather than to sort of judge it by the, by the person who's actually reading it. So it was very important. And again, it was a young voice. Yeah. It was a voice that obviously had no attachment to that time. So there was, a, there was a, a still a certain kind of, um, uh, uh, not a nostalgia, absolutely not, but a, 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 a wonder, if anything. Mm. So can you talk about how you arrived at this this form? I mean, you said you're not sure if it's a you know film or an artwork. 36 hours of of material. This could have gone longer. <laughs> I mean, it. <laughs> I, that's to come. That's the artwork, and I'm not kidding you. So that that's to come, but that's a different way of actually viewing that. There's a different. There's a, that would be a different working a, a viewing experience than than cinema, for example. So and also. The about time, it's about the weight of the subject. Uh, it deserves nothing less. Uh, the weight of the subject deserves, this couldn't be an hour and a half movie. It couldn't. I mean, it, it would be, uh, it, yeah, I, 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 this couldn't be an hour and a half. This is not, it just have to have the weight of time in a way. Um, and allowing the view, allowing it to sink in. Too many things are skimming the surface, especially you know with with, with the certain subject matters that deserve a certain kind of um, time to reflect and to sink in. 
I mean, I've heard people say that, oh, this could have been an, you know, an installation. Obviously, you do work in, in installations as well, but I, I, I don't think that there's a durational experience on beginning Yeah, those beginning are people who don't know, don't know much about art. That's fine. That's, that's you know, um, and unfortunately, that's how it is. But it's, it is, it, you, know, you know, they have, you know, again, it's this film, it's this cinema, um, and cinema isn't done. Uh, cinema is still to be explored. Cinema is still uh, uh, territory unknown, and that's what I'm. That's what, that's what, that's what excites me uh, about film. Um, and like I said, this subject matter deserves nothing less. I mean, uh, this 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 could not be an hour and a half. It'd be it would be a disservice and, and actually a kind of an insult to the to the subject. And I think also it's very important. It's not. It's more an experience than a history lesson, and you, it doesn't matter if you get all the text or that you wander off sometimes, like like you probably will do, and sometimes you hearing something takes the upper hand and sometimes you're drowning in the officials and that is all working together to give you this kind of experience of, of uh, time past and the then and the now and so on. And this could only happen through cinema. It's only, it's only, it's only place that could happen. I mean, it's interesting how your attention shifts as you watch a film like this, and also, you know, how you're attuned to information, and sometimes you're, you're not quite sure if you got it, and, and also how your attention is divided, but also it converges as well, um, depending on... Yeah, and one's own experience, one's own relationship to the subject matter, or how it can trigger something from one's own, you know, past, which is totally different. Uh, again, it's like going to a classical concert, where you're there, you're, you're present, things come in and things uh, uh, go out. But that's what space is for, is as, a, as, as an experience, as, as a meditation. And this is, a, as, as, as Banker rightly said, it's an experience, not a history lesson, absolutely. All right, I do want to leave time for some audience questions. Um, so maybe we'll start over there. There'll be, yeah, there'll be a microphone coming to you. Is it on? Yeah. yeah. Um, so just, um, Dennis, not only could it have been longer, it should have been longer. I hope there will be a longer verb. That's my only criticism of, of the afternoon. But I, I do have a question about um, the title and the relationship between the title and the images. Because Atlas of the Occupied City sounds like a historian's work. The Atlas drops off, and here we have an occupied city, which seems to be occupied in various ways. And you focus on the way it's, which it's occupied by children, the current city occupied by children, occupied by old people who seem to be harbingers of memories yet to be dislodged, occupied by protesters, unoccupied by people, the scenes of the um, nights of curfew. Um, and I wonder if, if this idea of the city being occupied in various ways, not just having been occupied, but having been reoccupied in the present, played any role in the way in which you constructed the film? Let me take over. <laughs> Fine. Um, yeah, um, I feel that the, the space, yeah, I know me moving, me, sorry, but forgive me, the space, me moving to Amsterdam, for example, and occupying that environment, uh, this house, uh, you know, this space. So by me coming in, it's sort of, okay, who, what was, well, who am I to, who's, place am I taking over? So that, again, was a, a huge trigger, like you said. It's, 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 you can't not think, well, at least I cannot th not think of that. And, and again, you know, it, the perspective that I'm looking at has been, that has been viewed numerous times, because it's a 17th century city, and, and, as, and all I could do is actually repeat what you're saying, or emphasize what you said, because you said it so eloquently and, and, and beautifully. Um, it's, it's kind of, you, you, you can't sit still and, and not think of the past within the present and how the past has affected the present. Uh, and it's okay also for those kids to be rolling up their weed and smoking their spliff and think, you know what, I don't give a fuck. It's okay too, because in order for them to have that space that they occupy, a lot of people had sort of sacrificed for that, to allow them to have that, and that's fine, that's okay too, you know? So it's not just about the consciousness of, of, of knowing who you are in the present is also not knowing in a way and, and being okay with it because we allowed, we're allowed to do that because of what, what has been fought for for that, if that makes sense. Okay. There's a question over there. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm wondering, uh, is there any reason you choose a four by three format? And also, I'm wondering the uh, image that we uh, seen is different from pre-COVID. Uh, the, 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 the format, I just love that format. It reminded me very much of very um, uh, Super 16 documentaries that I used to watch um, uh, from the BBC. And it was a, there, there was this sort of, sort of uh, 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 you know, I just, the, the format was just fuller in a way. It, it grabbed, it, it just, again, it, again it, and, and with painting, there's a kind of portraiture aspect to it as well, you know, not landscape, port more portraiture, which I love, the idea of a portrait of a city. How I can answer that, or well, best I, I can answer that, was what, how, I mean, I, I'll just give you a little bit of, of the background in that sense, because when we started documentary, to an extent, just, just after we started, COVID happened. So I didn't know, again, it was one of those things where I often get the impression with film, uh, how my, my philosophy is that if it rains, at least you could choose the color of your raincoat, go out there, shoot it, keep on shooting, because there was a conversation of, should we shoot it during this time? Uh, but for me, I just wanted to embrace it because it's part of our every day, part of what's happening. You know, unfortunately, it's terrible weather happened yesterday. You know, what happens, we have to embrace. So therefore, I want to have that somehow to reflect in our film. I hope that answers your question. I wasn't too sure if, I, if, if it has done. Sorry. Yeah, right there. Um, I had sort of an overall question about the use of the score in the film. I feel like because we hear so much of the like sonic environment of the city, the score actually provides an almost silence of the city. And I just kind of wanted to uh, understand more about how you employed the score throughout the film. Well, I didn't want too much score. Um, that's, you know, I'm not so keen on sort of emotionally sort of, um, you know, sort of bringing the audience in some kind of hostage position or sort of emotional sort of uh, blackmail, not interested. Music can be so, oh my God, so you're sickly sweet, you want a bucket next to you. So it was very important how the music came about. And it's very strange, because I was walking, I was in a shop, I was in a, a, a sort of hip shop. I was in a shop, but clothes. I was walking around with a friend of mine, I was like, and this music came along. I said, what is this music, what is this? I said, no, 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 get out of my way. You know when you, something happens to you, and you're like, no, no, it's nonsense. I was like, and I was like my God, what is this? I thought, is this music from the 70s? Is this music from the 60s, 70s, 80s? Who is, what is this? So thank God, my, I'm, not, I'm not a tech person, my friend had sh Shazam, and she put Shazam on, and it was, and it was, it was Ollie. You know, it was his, uh, Ollie Madden, his music. I thought, my God, is this guy exists? Is this the person I could actually work with? And he hadn't, I didn't know anything about this guy. All I knew was this guy had to do the music. That was strange, isn't it? That's what happened every day. So got in contact with him. Uh, he was this amazing cellist, and then I found that he did, some, uh, did a small film. Then I found that he did was a cellist that did some things for, uh, was it uh, Old Country for, no, was it Old Country for Men? Uh, no, I can't remember what movie he, he, he played on. And I thought, oh my God, this person actually understands music, uh, movies too, but he's an amazing guy. He's in Scotland, I rang him up, talked to him about it, da 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 da. Uh, I, never, I never met him until Cannes, and we spoke about the music, spoke about music, spoke about music, and I said, look, this is what I'm interested in, it's more of a, a, a texture, a smell, a, 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 a comes in and comes out. And uh, he just, and it, that was it. It was, it was, you know, things happen, and it's, they're beautiful, um, and amazing, isn't it? Isn't that crazy? That doesn't happen. I never, that never happens to me, and he was just gorgeous. I love him, I love the God, I love him madly. He's such a genius, a beautiful man. And um, yeah, it was one of those things where you just sort of, okay, just take it and run. Don't ask too many questions, you know? Yeah, sorry. But that was, that's a true story, actually, yeah. All right, um, we have time for one final question. So, front row. Uh, please forgive uh, my naivete, but the, something that struck me structurally about this film, is it fair to call it a pointillist film? And that it, there are these, these many moments of, of, of Bianca's text and the images that you're assembling, and they're, they're transporting and they're amazing, but through duration and through the cumulative experience, it becomes a much greater work and something that it attains, uh, as with a pointless painting, it's, it's just you, stepping back, you get more and more from it. Mm -hmm. Whereas then if you were to add the sum of each of the individual parts, mm. you get more through the cumulative experience. I hope that wasn't too in our take. No, it's pretty good. Degas. Beautiful metaphor. Yeah. Uh, Degas, I'll take it any day. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful metaphor, yeah. yeah, fantastic. No, but what I love about, you know, pointless paintings is you go in and it's abstract, huh? And you, but it's still about life. 
you know, you get close and then, and then you come out and you come out and you come out and it's, and it's not just the context of the actual painting, it's the context of the wall or the museum or the institution or the house is in and you come out even more and it's about the, the city that you're in. And you come out even more and it's about the country when you come out even more, it's about the world that you're in. You know what I mean? You got it, bang. That's on tape too, isn't it? Good, well done, mate. Um, I'm gonna ask actually one more, just throw in one more question, Steve, since um, I know you've, you, after you're finishing this, you went on to make, um, you're still finishing a fictional film. I'm not gonna ask you a very specific <laughs> question, but you know, I feel like I have to at least, it you're is making a, me feel nude on stage, Dennis, that's not cool. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I mean, I'm fully clothed, of course. Yes. Yeah. It is a film about not an occupied city, but um, a bombed city. I mean, the next film is called Blitz, and it's set in wartime London. And you have also dealt with history in big ways in your films, of course, with 12 Years a Slave. So I'm just wondering how making occupied city has affected your approach in making Blitz, if you're even conscious of it yet. Um, I think no one, you know, what I, interesting in, you know, just reading Banker's book and everything else and, you know, making Occupy City and stuff is there's no one in this room is detached from this picture. No one in this room is detached from this picture in one way, shape, form or the other. Everybody will have a relationship with this picture through their families, through their journey to this, to be sat on this, these seats here in the cinema. And for me, wanting to sort of do something, for example, with Blitz, for example, in, in UK, uh, you know, I just, you know, just wanted to sort of do something which is immediate to, to, to me. Um, and again, you know, again, it's one of those things where all you got to do is scratch the surface and you'll see some sort of aspect of the narrative of one's family or one's history to where we are now. And we just have to sort of, you know, again, it's very cliche, but we have to not forget because obviously what's happening now in, in the politics of the world is, is you know we're, we're shifting to the right things are shifting to the right and if anything you know your book um, this film hopefully it could be a reminder of you know a reminder of what's at stake and, and it's, 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 it's freedom in one way shape form or the other um, and that's it really I don't know I don't know if history repeats itself I don't necessarily think, I don't know. I mean, it could change, you know? You know it could it could go left. It, it could, it, it, we could go right, it went left. I don't know what's to come, but um, as an artist, as a person conscious in this time, um, you are just here to sort of um, facilitate a space in order to sort of, not, not, to, not to raise an alarm, but to sort of reflect on and to see what, let's <sighs> just reflect on and to see what, um, I don't know. It's not even. I don't want to even call it a, 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 an alarm or, or some kind of rallying call. I mean, I thought I wanted to sort of be a rallying call, but again, it's just a case of reminder of what happens when you do nothing. That's it. All right. I think we have to end it there, um, Steve and Bianca. Thank you so much for the film. Thanks for being here. Thank you.